Slurp. So, do you ask questions and I just... I'll ask you a question and just answer. Go, right, okay. Can I shout abuse or do I have to keep no, quiet? No, you should you keep quiet. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going. Okay, it's the 15th of September 2011. Can you tell me your name, please? Linda Green. And what was your date of birth? 14th of December 1960. And what does that make you today? I'm coming on 51 next December. <laughs> And what was your place of birth? I was born in Olmscote Hospital Maternity Unit. Um, what were your parents' names? My mum was called Marie and my dad was called Godfrey Derrick, but he was known as Derrick and the surname was Bailey. What was your mother's maiden name? Fallon. And where, where, where were they from? Well, they were both from Bolton. Um, they, both families grew up there, uh, which mum and dad did, and they met there. And the reason they moved to Bursco was my dad had got a job at Eric Bemrose at Aintree and they were living in a caravan since they got married in 1952. So, of course, it's easy to move a caravan. So they, they took that over to a farm at Kirby. Um, but after, I don't know, how, I can't remember exactly when he started working there, but after a while, my mum got fed up and wanted a house. And she'd heard about these bungalows being built in Bursco. So she went over and uh, by the time she came home she'd bought one. <laughs> so. so what was Eric Benrose? It was a printer's, big printer's. They used to do um, Radio Times and um, oh, lots of, uh, Robin Comic I remember, I used to get Robin Comic um, and, and other big publications. So how long was your dad a, a, in, in working there? Oh, right up to, I think it was 1980. Five no eighty six when Eddie Shaw and all the the print uh, print works went on strike because they started bringing in computers and then they shut Eric Bemrose down and he was made redundant so he he, he was all my life he was there until until he got he always said it was people like me make made people like him redundant. <laughs> so what did he actually do there? You know? Well, the job was called photogravure retoucher. And that, as far as I can gather, when negatives, because obviously it was no digital print in those days, the negatives came in and they would manually, with, with brushes, very even very even one hair brushes, manually touching up the negatives to make them right. Yeah. And, and air, air, you hear it about airbrushing in uh, magazines, I did all that, but it was all done by hand. Mm. And that's what he did. Right, so did your mother do anything? Um, not... Since she married Dad, really, um, before that she was a professional um, acrobat and dancer, right. and toured with toured with An Ensa all all around the country. Worked at Chessington Zoo Circus and um, had a had a whale of a time basically. But so she she gave all that up. So she... what was Ensa? Oh gosh, every night something awful is what they used to call it. Wasn't it was I can't remember. It was what the government set up. Um, Entertainment, I can't remember. National can't. Service Association. Is that what it was? Thank you. <laughs> All I remember was every night something awful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, was, was your mother, did she get trained in acrobatics and things? Yeah, well, her, her dad um, had been a PT instructor in the army. He was a, he was a very small man. Uh, he was only five, uh, four foot ten I think, or four foot eight I think he might have been. He was a little man but big, big shoulders. And his his speciality was the rings and the pommel horse. Um so right from when my mum could walk really, he had her tumbling. Mm. And uh, she said she remembers uh, running coming home from school and he'd run to meet her and put his hand out and she'd jump and he'd catch her on his hand and pop her up in the air. So she was she tumbled always and then um, it was her her older sister, Josie saw something about um, somebody was auditioning for dancers and the, she said to mum, come on, we'll, come on, we'll go and do this. And my mum my mom sort of went with her and bold as brass, you know, because my mum, she was a natural and she'd seen Fred Astaire and everything. And so, oh yeah, I can do that. So up the stairs they went and, oh yes, yes, we're dancers. And um, my mum got taken on and the woman who was recruiting them uh, took her to live with her in Southport and gave her formal formal training in dancing and uh, tap dancing ballet. Um, I've, I've got some lovely studio photographs of her in her costumes and everything. And 
Yeah. So well, what did she do with that then? What, where did she go with it? Well, all, all over. I mean, obviously the war was on as well, so um, there was a big demand, I suppose, for, for travelling entertainers. And they went Scotland, Glasgow, um, as I say, Chessington Zoo, they were engaged there for a while. I've got letters and telegrams uh, sort of requesting... Uh, she was in a duo with another girl called Frida Barton, and they were called the Garland Sisters. So these telegrams, you know, w would it be possible to engage the Garland Sisters for a season or for a, you know, a run of two, three weeks? And, and somewhere there's a list of all the, the tour list, really. And it wasn't logical. You know, you'd think if you were going to do a tour, you'd say, right, well, you know, I'll go to London and then I'll go to Birmingham and then to Derby. But no, it was up, down, <laughs> all over the place. So was she employed by a company or was she, was she um, independent? She there was one, um, yeah, it was it was a group, but then she would be employed by different theatres. So it was like my granddad was their agent. So like for the pair of them, my granddad would sort of see to the, the them having their contracts and everything. But they would tour with a with a group, and then they'd have a chaperone because they were they weren't twenty one, so they had to they had to be escorted. Well, she started when she left school at fourteen, because of course everybody left school at fourteen then. Yeah. Um, I think she'd been doing it. I think she'd been doing it kind of amateur before, but um, because she'd already been trained and she was already getting engagements when she left school, it was the automatic job to go into. Cause, yeah. um, and I remember she said that they used to get five pounds a week, which was a good wage. And she said that was a good man's wage. You know, like a skilled man would earn that. And they would get five pounds a week. Right. So, uh, yeah. what, what did your dad do? What was his hobbies? Oh, trains, painting. He was he was a very keen artist. Uh, anything transport really. I spent and most of my childhood holidays going to um, air displays and naval exhibitions. Anything to do with ships, trains, trams. Uh, he he did all that. Went all over the place. Yeah. Because uh, I know uh, he did a couple of posters for the Dickinson Arms. He did. Yeah. Actually, I've got, I, I, I want to give it to you, I've got a flag that he did, which we found, I'd forgotten, with a Titanic on it. Oh, you can show it to me. I don't oh, well. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't really want it. Well, it's not that I don't want it. It's, 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 your, it's, it's yeah. your, your memory. Yeah. yeah. Um, which school did you go to? Initially, um, initially I went to Lordsgate. Yeah, that's um, school, yes. Yeah. And that, that was the nearest one to our house because where we lived, we lived near uh, Burska Junction Station. So it was easy enough to just walk over the bridge. And um, my mum started me off by, I used to go to Sunday school, um, which was on obviously Sunday afternoon. And, and she used to sort of walk me down the path and say, you know, and this is where you'll go to school when you're a bigger girl. And that was all fine. I got used to it. And I remember the first morning of school. I was absolutely horrified when I discovered that I had to be there for nine o'clock. Because <laughs> it took so only half past two in the afternoon. No, no, this is and it's all day. <laughs> and so that off I went and and of course other kids, first day of school, there were there were tantrums, there were kids holding onto the door, screaming. And uh, apparently I just disappeared into the toy cupboard and said, see you later. And that was <laughs> that was that. But I only stayed there for the first three years. Um my mum wasn't, she wasn't really too happy with, um, I think, I, I think she didn't think it was particularly good education there. And then she sent me to the Burska Methodist, which I absolutely loved. It was yeah. a super school. Right, so you were three years at Lordscape. Lord do you remember your teachers there? I remember the first lady, I think she was called Miss Shenton. And she was, she seemed like 150, but she, she was probably just coming up for retirement. And she was such a gentle, sort of grey-haired old granny sort of, of person. I loved her. She was really nice. And then in the second year infants, we had Miss Reed, who, again, she was probably newly qualified. She was probably only about 18, really. Um, and I remember she had a big bouffant hairdo. And um, I found her a bit overpowering. She was very enthusiastic. And uh, oh, music less oh, music lessons... And we used to have these, we all had things to play, and she would give me the sticks. Well, even at the age of six, I knew I was better than the sticks. I was most insulted. And so one day, I decided I would take my own tambourine. 
and I had it in my school bag. Well, then I, I sort of chickened out and I wasn't going to say anything. And Michelle Burroughs grasped me up and said, uh, Miss, Miss, Linda's got a tambourine. And she bore down on me all enthusiastic and said, Have you? Have you got a tambourine? <laughs> And I was happy enough with the sticks after that. I just, I just sat quiet. <laughs> You'd made your point. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember who we had in the third year infants, and and I don't remember who that was. Um, but then when when I went to the Methodist, I know I had Mr. Little in junior two, and he was brilliant. And then Miss Moore, um, who we, she was oh she was fantastic. She just brought everything to life. You know some teachers. Really, we were there when the school was a hundred in nineteen seventy, and we had all lessons about Victorian school, and and we all had to go um, dressed in as best as we could, you know, and, and have proper Victorian lessons, and 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 uh, oh, de decimalisation was coming in, so we had decimal five on the radio, and she had us reading The Hobbit, and we could all write in runes. We, um, I remember writing essays in runes. She was just More so. Um, in the Hobbit, they have this special writing. Um, I, I think it's based on Nordic, old Nordic script. But I, I wouldn't be able to read it now. But we we actually could read and write in runes. Yeah, so it was like doing a foreign language. It was. Yeah. It was, and and it was just everything that she wanted us to do. She just inspired this enthusiasm and and. You know, and the school choir. She set up the school choir, and, and we did. Um, what's it? Um, amazing technical a dream coat, Joseph. And I mean, we were only little ones, but we did it. Yeah. We'd have done anything for her. <laughs> and then Mr. Percival was junior four, and he was he was a one for the reading. He had us all. He had like a book club, and he got us all reading all these different books and um, and doing uh, like talking about things that we'd done. And, in class and uh, and then what was good about that was I was always okay at school but I was always rubbish at maths oh and I'll tell you why as well because it, it it's a it's an issue when I was in first year infants we had to all stand at the front of the class in a long line now I was either asleep on the day or I was away or something but we'd obviously been told to learn the two times table and I hadn't so I was at the end of the line because I was the smallest and I was always at the end. And everybody's off, you know, one's two is two, two twos are four. I was miming, mouth was going, nothing was coming out. Um, and at the end of it, and it was Miss Reed, it was, said, um, everyone may now sit down apart from Linda Bailey, who will remain at the front of the class and recite the two times table on her own. And I'm sure that's why I, I was phobic about maths ever since after that. And so coming up into the fourth year juniors, Mr. Percival and Mr. Todd, the headmaster, called my mum in and said, look, you know, she could, she's got the potential to go to grammar school, but her maths are going to let her down. So we advise that you get her some help. And they recommended this chap and our tuition and obviously I, then I passed my 11 plus but that they picked that up and did something about it which is you know I always think that was really good yeah. I, I suppose you'd expect it but I don't know I just felt it was it was good of them mm. not yeah. to just let me flounder right mm. good. do you remember uh, listening to the well we called the wireless in those days maybe I don't know <laughs> uh, the radio the radio at um, school yeah what sort of programs did you we, well, as I say, decimal five, I remember. Cause, what was that? Um, it was preparing us for the decimal currency coming in. And we had, like, um, cardboard coins. And I can't... Th there, was a, there was a silly rhyme, that, a silly little song about decimal five. And, and then they did... You had to do sums with them. And, um, and it just got us all ready for that coming in. Uh, singing together. I remember doing singing together. Um, do you remember any of the songs? Um, there was a calypso. Um, oh, it, um, I think there were things like "Oh no, John, no, John, no, John, no," and but uh, yeah, uh, um, no, it, it might come back to me after. But yeah, I know that the probably the calypso you mentioned was "Carry Me Aki Go Linstead Market." That's the one. <laughs> Not a what sell. a Saturday night. That's the one. That's the one. I mean, I'm the same age yes. too, so we did the same sort of. 
things. So I've, yes. I've still got loaded the pamphlets actually. Right. Yeah. Together. I think the junior or more junior people had time in tune. I don't but remember maybe that, that was television. One. Uh, did you have a television? Oh yeah, they did. We did have television sometimes, because I can remember watching the clock go down. They always had that clock that counted down, and and the teacher wouldn't put the sound up until the clock had gone down. But I can't remember what we watched no. for the life of me now. I, I know there were. I had a job to be honest, without yeah. looking back at uh, something to remind mm. myself. Mm. There, was, there was all sorts of. And it wasn't videoed in those days, was it? So you had to no. watch it as it went out. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it would be, be sort of like eleven o'clock in the morning, sort of after morning break. So you'd come back in, and then I presume they used the morning break to set the TV up because mm. it wasn't always there. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know where we were. They did have a television in the room, so you just come and sit, then they turn it on. And uh, black and white, of course. Of course, of yeah. course. We couldn't. We couldn't afford it. No, it didn't exist. I, I can remember um, broadcasts on BBC Two telling about, you know, explaining how colour television was going to work and being fascinated with this red and the green and the is it red, green and blue, whatever it was, the, the yeah. tubes, and being absolutely fascinated. And I was absolutely, utterly convinced that one day there'd be a switch over and our television would be coloured and didn't realise that that meant you'd actually have to buy a new piece of equipment. And so it was a while before we got colour telly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned 11 plus mm. uh, that was a time when everybody did it why, why did yes. you have 11 plus well it was to well it depends on, on who you asked and it? it was just to sort the, the top percentile out from, and send them to a different school um, and, and I think I used to think I used to believe um, it was a bit arbitrary, you know, you'd either pass or you didn't. It was a long time before the penny drop that there are there are so many places at the grammar school mm. and so the top ones, they're the ones that go. It wasn't, it, it wasn't just a sort of, well, you might pass or you might not. It depended how many places they had that year, who they could take. Um, and then everybody else went to um, the secondary school in Bursco. Mm. Do you remember... Working up to the eleven plus, mm. were you told what it was or? Well, we were told it was important, yeah. you know, and um, and we were uh, given sort of tests to do, sort of practicing, and there were lots of um, verbal reasoning tests and sequences. I remember having to do sequences and complete this sequence, and some of them would be numerical ones, and some of them would be language ones, um, and. Uh, all around that time, they took us on a trip to uh, what was Elks and Foxes Biscuit Factory in Bursco. It's a packaging place now. And they took us round, and it was so hot and so noisy. And it was like a vision of hell to me. And I can, I can really remember going home terrified, thinking, if I don't pass my 11 plus, that's where I'm going to have to work. And it kind of spurred me on a bit. Yeah. So when it came to actually doing the 11 plus, do you remember mm. that day? Yes, I do. I do. And I, I remember, I, I think we were let to go home when we'd done it. I think we were actually allowed to go home and being nervous, you know, thinking, well, this is, I was only 11, but, you know, you're realising this is a big thing now. This could, this will affect the rest of my life, um, which is probably why they let us go home, because we were probably a bit hyper at the end of it. And when did you get your results? Now that I don't remember, I really don't. Um, after doing it, my next memory is then going to uh, Rawcliffe's Outfitters in Southport to get my uniform. So there's obviously something had happened in between. It. I don't know what so, period so of time. Did Dad didn't say, right, this is your, the envelope. You know. The, mm, I don't remember. No, I don't think. If if they did, I've blotted it out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having a bit of an upset because there was a form my mum had to fill in to say it was like a choice of schools. Um, and I, I mean, there wasn't really much of a choice. If it was, if you passed, you went to the grammar school. If you didn't, you went to the secondary. But I think you could opt for the secondary in Ormskirk. But the, there was also an option for boarding school. And my mum just jokingly said, oh, I'll put you down for boarding school. And I broke my heart because I thought she meant it. <laughs> She spent about an hour consoling me and telling me it was only a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know one or two who did go to boarding school. Mm. Um, we were at Bispin where I was. But, uh, 
There's, all, there's very few people did that option. Yeah. And I don't know why. You know, no. you think the parents don't like them. I know, well, that's what I thought when she said it. It's, oh, she doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> Do you remember how your classrooms were laid out in your junior school? Mm, yeah, there were... Um, funnily enough, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. The old wooden desks with the lids that went up and down in twos. Mm. And they still actually had the old inkwells in them, not that we used them, but they were in the little sort of groove for your pen at the top. Um, and you were you were sort of told where you would sit by the teacher. And the one I remember, and this is what I was talking to a chap... I was sat next to a boy called Graham Fairclough. Um, and why we were paired up, I don't know, but he, he was sort of my oppo. Um, and, I, yeah, I've just, I just found out all about his family. and what, he's, he's still in Bursco. And, um, but they, they were... Um, I don't think we all faced the front. I think that, although the desks were in twos, I think they were sort of arranged so that you were in a, a group... Um, hmm. But in the very, very first, in the in the infants, there were just tables, I think. I don't mm. think there were desks then. No. And we had tidy boxes mm. to put our things in. D did you have blackboards? Yes, yes. Um, can't really remember that at Lordsgate, but at, um, at the Methodist, they had those ones that go up, you know, like on a roller. Yeah. And so one of them would have squares on for doing sums and... And then a, a, an ordinary one for writing on. Right. Um, are you right or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Did you know anybody who was left-handed? Um, no. And are you going to ask me did, were they made to write yeah. with? I I don't I don't remember. No. And I mean, I, it happened to my dad because he was left-handed. Yeah. And they made him write with his right hand. But in in my at my age, I didn't. I wasn't aware no. of anybody. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm left-handed. Right. But I wasn't made to no. use my other hand, and I don't remember anybody else. No, I, I, it had probably been done away with by the time mm. we were. Yeah. Because um, my, my dad always was, he, he, he could paint with either hand. Yeah. He wrote with his right hand, but he could paint with his left hand. Because um, it was obviously still there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny how it works. Um, if a knife and fork, I would eat right-handed. Mm. A spoon, I'd have to eat with my left hand. Right. Uh, if I did it with my right, a spoon would be, I'd be all over the place. <laughs> um, writing, of course, with the left hand. Mm. Um, guitar, I play right handed. Right. You know, so it, it yeah. just doesn't sort of dominate your, your life as it's no, being no. left handed. No. Um, again, if I played golf, I'd play right handed. Uh, I don't know why that is, whether it's just the way your brain works with. Two hands. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Un unless it's to do with because everybody does it that way. It's it's like when I pick up a recorder, I I pick up a recorder the wrong way, and I don't. I it just fit. It feels right to. Is it? Is that where that hand goes at the top? And right, that, right. The ah, you, well there you are. You see that that I would automatically go that way, yeah. and I'd, I don't I'd, know why. I'd, I'd play it like that, right hand at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. No, I'd put. I'd, I'd I automatically yeah. pick it up with my right hand at the top, and I don't know because I don't play the recorder, no. and that. I'd, and that may be one reason I can't do it because I will insist on getting my hands the wrong way around. Right. Um, okay, you've been to Rawcliffe, so you've got your nice new uniform for the yes. drama school. Yeah. Drama Just a bit school. too big, like they always yeah. were. <laughs> um, what was your first day like? Oh, remember? It, it was terrifying. It was really frightening because the Methodist school had probably about 100 pupils in the whole school. And there were probably twice as that many just in our year alone. And we'd been... Mum and Dad had sort of driven me up to the school the week before to sort of get the idea of where it was. But I, I went to school on the train and I, can't, I, I must have gone on my own. I don't think my mum would have humiliated me by taking me on... Um, but going to the school and it just seemed huge. And, I you know, just finding my way round and and just going into this classroom with all these people and finding out it was one of six in our year. And, oh, I, I, it blew my mind. I'd never seen anything like it. Yeah. It took it took me quite a while to settle down, really. Did anybody else go from the uh, the school you were at? Um, you? Yeah, a few did, but they weren't in my class, yeah. so I, every, everybody was a stranger in, in my class. Yeah. 
I mean, to be honest, it was probably the same for everybody. Mm. You might get one or two that had been to the, the junior school together, but yeah, uh, you were all you were all in the same boat. Yeah. How quickly did you find making friends? Well, I I made a few. Uh, in fact, there was one girl. Funnily enough, I'd bumped into in Rawcliffe buying the uniform. She and her mum were there at the same time, and by coincidence, she was in in my class. So it was like, oh, oh, I've seen you before. So. Um, but, um, I, yeah, you always make... There's always sort of odd ones that you hang around with mostly. Um, and I palled up with a girl called Kim McLean. Um, she, she wasn't actually in my class, I don't think. But she was sort of the person that um, I suppose I had most in common with. And we were, like, main friends all through school. Um, and I have to say, I was one of those people I was not uh, the most popular girl in the school uh, I, I didn't fit in uh, I didn't particularly like pop music or understand pop music I didn't really have very much in common with other kids I, and I, I think as well my, my parents were, were older slightly older than other kids parents and um, so I was uh, I was often the butt of the jokes and the uh, you know funny things on my locker and stuff like that but uh, but yeah you, you found the odd ones that you Alison Oakes and Patricia Horrocks come to mind they're, they're just odd ones that you'd pal around with yeah it's funny how you do group together and with like-minded people how yeah you find them yeah um, I was the same uh. you know you, you get the people we had uh, two or three who came from Brisbane um, boys and girls uh, and like you said, they're in different classes. Yeah. So you find that uh, you have to pal up with somebody else. Yeah. And playtime, you tend to find the ones who would hang about and do nothing, you know, yeah. the non-sporty ones. That's, that was yeah. the key. If you were sporty, then you were in with a chance. But And, and there were, oh, Sally Stone was a girl, and she sat opposite me at lunch. Her father was the headmaster at Bursco Secondary School. And when we, from the day we started, we were sort of sat on these long tables of eight people, way, right? and me and her were on the end up opposite. And she used to kick me under the table all through lunchtime, just kick me, kick me, kick me. And it was a really weird thing because they had a, a music festival, um, and I went in for the soprano solo, and I won it. And that was in the morning. And at lunchtime, we sat down for lunch, and she just looked at me. She said. That was good this morning, and she never kicked me again. Isn't that strange? I know. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, do you remember your teachers at grammar school? Oh, I remember Miss Swindell's geography, because she didn't like me at all. <laughs> I couldn't do right for her. And I'd always been good at geography. I couldn't understand it. Um, but she used to give me rubbish marks, and my mum couldn't understand it. Um, she, was, she always wore mini skirts. Um, miniskirts really were going a bit out of fashion by then. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she would go and lean over the boys' desks. <laughs> yes, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's her. Uh, Mr Gelder was the music teacher. Who was your form teacher in the first year? Oh, gosh. Um, do you know, I think it was Mr Mitchell, French. Sorry. I think it was. Froggy mm. Mitchell. Froggy Mitchell, yeah. yes, yes. Oh yes, he was, and uh, he was very, very keen on on mouth shapes in pronouncing French words, and he was quite comical really. He used to stand at the front of the class pulling faces. Mm. <laughs> um, who else did we have? Mm, mi oh, Miss Art Teacher, um, Miss Mason. No, Art. she was English. Oh, was she English? Yeah, Miss Miss Mason. Mason. Well, she was tall, wasn't she, yeah. Miss Mason? Yeah, Mrs. Miss Mrs. Burns. Yeah. That's right. Make me a picture of Ormskirk on Market Day. That's what she used to say. Did I always remember Mrs. Burns? I had her in the third year, <laughs> first and second year. We had uh, Mr. Turner and oh yeah, and the more should we say uh, outgoing uh, yeah. uh, modern type yes. I can't remember her name now but um, uh, uh, whoever it was anyway. but they, they did more modern things with you yeah. in art and yeah. Mrs Burns always seemed to be the make, a, make me a, a, a picture mache, of them mache, mache, mache puppet, yeah. you know, something you yeah. probably did about 50 years yeah. previous I've still uh, got mine okay. Yes. <laughs> but uh, when we had her in the third year 
Um, you do you draw something. I mean, I couldn't draw for toffee to be honest with you, but we draw something and you take it up to her, and she'd say, 